Okay, my name's Daniel Thompson from the Wasp Boss Project and I am back with another video about Wasp Boss. Um, there hasn't been a video for a while, but there's been quite a lot of interesting new developments to look at. Uh, the first of which is having the step counter working. So um, the colour scheme perhaps isn't everybody's taste yet, but um, it has been checked out. If I just bring out a shot and uh, make a jogging motion with my arm for a moment uh, while I keep talking to you, there's a... Um, anti-noise rejection so you have to get eight steps and then it retrospectively counts the first eight steps and then counts properly so you can see there it's increased by about 12 while i've been talking um so that's the first thing it's step counter it works um there's not a great deal to say much more than the step count I, mean, I found it very useful for exercising it's been quite good in the mornings uh, this one makes much better television uh, this is my heart rate right now as we sit and look at it um, so this is a graph coming directly off the sensor on the back of the system and after 10 seconds about now, it starts working out the beats per minute. Now, 80 is a bit high for me, I have to admit, but in order to have a less embarrassing step count, I've been jogging just before I made this film, so I could have a step count of 1,000, because I haven't actually, uh, I've been working on it, I haven't actually had it on my wrist today. So we should see that drop down as we go. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of signal processing going into this. So the signal that comes off the watch is really noisy, and it needs a lot of filtering. Um, so what you see here is post filtering. It's been through um, a lot of uh, gain control and low frequency and high frequency um, pass filters um, to, to give us this shape, which is what we actually then run the heart rate detection on. So at the moment, we have a very simple heart rate detector that is based on autocorrelation. It just checks to see when the signal essentially cancels itself out. Um, and yeah, that's the heart rate detector, which is really Quite nice to see. Um, I've been experimenting with the colours a bit. I'm still not quite happy with, with where we are on the colours, but we'll look at that later. Um, other things that have been going on in the self-test particularly. Um, so we had, uh, we've got sliders. So this hasn't been shown, I think, on any videos before, um, but this is four, three sliders, uh, which I can use to generate colour patches. So when I'm experimenting with themes of the watch, it's actually really quite useful to get the colour on the screen because the pine time colour response is just a tiny bit strange um, and the cyan isn't as cyan as you think it should be and maybe the uh, yellow is not as powerfully yellow as it might be. So the colour response is not quite the same as you'd expect from a normal RGB device. Um, I'm not quite sure why to be honest. Um, I've also brought in some fill tests so we have optimised very very hard the fills that was there to get that graph that you saw working, drawing really efficiently, uh, because previously the this is a horizontal line being drawn. That's a collection of horizontal lines um, being benchmarked, and then we can do the same benchmark on our vertical lines. Vertical lines were really inefficient to draw in older versions of WaspBoss, so that's been fixed up and made better. And then finally, a very quick glimpse of the future. Um, I'm currently working on notifications, so I've done all the threading work to change the threading model for WaspBoss. So anybody who's Wasp tool will now be able to get to the Python console without having to stop the watch. So your watch will still keep working as you work through your, um, uh, as you work at the Python prompt. So you don't have to stop the watch. And that means we're nearly ready now to implement notifications, which is the final kind of smart feature before we can do the next release of WatchOS, uh, WaspBoss. Um, and what you're seeing here is basically my testing the notification delivery machinery. Um, I have not yet made the notifications GUI, but I have got my Android device sending notifications through the phone and I've got this test facility with plus and minus to add extra notifications as we go. Um, so I'm currently working with, on the gadget bridge code um, similar to Esprin Esperino um, to, to get that working. And then we should um, be about done. So that's a very quick glance of where we are at the moment with the WaspBoss project. Um, like I said, I think the heart rate monitor is definitely the one that is most photogenic um, and I'm really pleased for the little graph because um, it does help us understand the data going on here. Um, it has been really, really good for looking at uh, when there's a mistake because of course if I squeeze the display slightly you'll notice that the figures all go crazy um, and because they've gone out of spec as I press the watch frame into my arm the um, signals that is received by the signal processing is just absolutely crazy. Um, so the, the, the noise is about three or four times bigger in magnitude than the heart rate signal. So 
uh, that can create false effects and so on. Um, you'll notice I'm sitting down very quietly while I'm doing this. The heart rate detector as it stands does only work when you're still. Um, if you're doing something like jogging, um, it actually detects the frequency of your jogging rather than the frequency of your heart. That's to do with the way the blood's moving in your arm. Um, but you can see it all on the graph. So it's really nice if you're trying to work out why you're not getting a good signal, you can actually sit down and look at the signal on your arm um, and try and understand what's happening. So that's where we are with WaspBoss at the moment. And I shall probably not give you another video until we have notifications working, which will be very exciting. So that's all for now.